Welcome to Firebase Release Notes for August, where we cover recent big and small updates from Firebase. Now, we've got six topics to cover today, so let's dig in right away, shall we? We launched two related features for Firebase extensions at Google I.O. The Extensions Emulator and Extensions Events. Now, the Extensions Emulator allows you to run extensions locally without touching your production project, while the Extension Events allow you to customize an extension's behavior by writing handlers that respond to specific events in that extension. Well, now we made sure that these two features work better together, allowing you to respond to events in emulated extensions. Such events are published to the Event Arc emulator, which is new in our emulator suite. And you can register handlers for them in the Cloud Functions emulator. So upgrade to the latest Firebase CLI that I link below to get you started. One of the cool features of the Firebase Rootam database are its on disconnect handlers. These handlers allow you to queue a write operation when you are connected to the database backend, and that then get executed on the server when it detects that the client is no longer connected. This allows many use cases, such as the presence system that you can find in our documentation. But when used with Firebase Authentication to require authenticated cleanups, the on-disconnect handlers could fail on the server when the auth token had expired. And this led to so-called zombie connection nodes in the database, especially from inactive browser tabs. Well, not anymore. We just upgraded our database backend to run these on disconnect handlers just before the associated auth token expires. We will improve resource usage for such scenarios in an upcoming SDK release, but now, five years after it was reported, the zombie connection nodes should be a thing of the past. Earlier this year, we announced that Firebase Hosting now has origin servers on multiple continents, speeding up initial requests of static content across the world. Well, we just expanded this to also include rewriting of URLs in Firebase Hosting to Cloud Functions in regions other than US Central One. So now you can configure your Cloud Functions to serve dynamic content to run in a specific region close to your users. And then you can set up hosting to access it in that same region. Here's an example of that. And you don't even need to specify the region in that second snippet, as our CLI will try to figure it out automatically when you run Firebase Deploy. Since all network traffic now stays close to the users of your app, the performance improvements can be significant, as you can see in this chart where we use Cloud Functions to access a real-time database. And we saw the latency drop from 275 milliseconds to just 75 milliseconds. Leaving notes on a crash report in Crashlytics allows your team to comment on specific issues with things like questions, status updates, and more. Well, we recently started tracking the author of each note and now display that information in the Crashlytics console. This makes it much easier for you to track down who left a specific note and follow up with them. Last month, we had a big announcement about the optional Firebase authentication with Identity Platform upgrade. This added SAML and OIDC support, blocking cloud functions, multi-factor authentication, and much more to Firebase. Well, that multi-factor authentication is now also supported on Flutter. The API changes just landed in our SDKs for Flutter developers, and we also added support in the Firebase UI bindings for Flutter. So upgrade to the latest version of our Flutter libraries to start using multi-factor authentication. And finally, after two years of purely virtual events, this year's Firebase Summit is going to be a combined virtual and in-person event on October 18th from the Google Event Center in New York. We'll have a jam-packed day with a keynote full of new launches, lightning talks on technical topics, and interactive workshops where you can all participate. The Firebase team will be there in full force, and I can't wait to see many of you there in person and everyone else right here on the live stream. Registration opens soon, so keep following us on Twitter to learn more about joining in person or virtually. Those were all the updates we have time for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Puff, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes. Thank you.